A second major contribution of technology to teaching writing is that it allows students to collaborate in the writing process. In collaborative writing, the text is created by more than one person. When students work together, each one can benefit from the ideas of the other. This can be good for language learning as well as for producing good writing. In the example of the Person I Admire essay, a collaboration between two writers might result in a suggestion to change the title. The collaborator might suggest replacing A Person I Admire with The Greatest U.S. President. This would make the title specific to the essay and signal that the essay will explain Barack Obama's greatness. If students are working together on the text like this, they can have a conversation through these comments during the writing process. Tools for collaborative writing have prompted big changes in writing pedagogy, making writing a social process. Collaborative writing tools are not used only for teaching, Writing in workplaces is done collaboratively, too. This means that when you teach English using collaborative writing tools, you are preparing students for writing in English in the real world. At this point, we are ready to meet our writing expert. Professor Kotos teaches English at Iowa State University. She also does research to investigate how to teach writing better by using technology. I asked Professor Kotos how she became interested in writing. How did you get interested in writing? I became interested in writing when I was a graduate student. Coming from a different country and a completely different educational system, I was challenged by all the writing assignments that I had to complete in my coursework. Even though I knew English well enough, I was not at all confident in my academic writing skills. I was eagerly waiting for the feedback from my professors. And I came to realize that the way I was taught to write in my own language was drastically different from the kind of writing expected here. For example, back in school, my teachers always emphasized that the main idea has to be developed gradually with details that are described using complex sentences and abundant stylistic devices like metaphor, hyponymy, hyperbole, and so on. I learned to write very long complex sentences and to use flowery language. I came to realize that in English, the readers have completely different expectations. They want to see the main idea at the very beginning, and they expect carefully organized details to support the idea. I also realized that flowery, metaphorical language is not very appropriate in academic writing. I should say that I learned a lot about writing through teaching when I was a teaching assistant in graduate and undergraduate writing courses. Since the approach to writing was so different from what I knew, I spent a lot of time preparing for class, and I learned together with my students. In fact, I often completed the tasks that I planned to assign to my students myself first, trying to see whether and what I would learn from that. Putting myself in my students' shoes gave me a really good understanding of both the writing conventions and how to best teach them. The thing that keeps me most interested in writing is the importance of knowing how to write for specific purposes and for specific audiences. For instance, the purpose of writing an expository essay, which is often assigned to undergraduate students, is to explain an idea or an issue, and the immediate audience is typically the teacher and other classmates. So students follow very specific assignment guidelines provided by the teacher. On the other hand, the purpose of a research article that a graduate student prepares for publication is completely different. In this case, the audience is a broad disciplinary community whom the student 
doesn't even know. But the members of this disciplinary community have high and very specific expectations of how a research argument should be presented in a journal manuscript. In the next video, we'll look more closely at how purpose and audience affect writing.